The movie begins with a scene from Lucy's childhood. She's narrating at the beginning of the story as she's reminiscing about her childhood. All the moments she spent with her dad. The wise words he would tell her and the truth about life. How it isn't always how you expect it to be. As a hopeless romantic she would always believe the fantastic stories her father would tell her. She would always be so fascinated even by the wildest stories. It cuts to when she's an adult, to the first time she saw him. He of course didn't fulfill the fantasies she had in mind. Instead he gave her a token and she instantly fell in love. She believed that he was her prince, but the turnout of events will shock you. Present day, Lucy, the hopeless romantic, is trying to pull a Christmas tree from the window. The tree ends up falling and breaking somebody's window. That window belongs to Joe, who has an interesting son. Joe Jr. likes Lucy and is doing anything he can to be with her. But when things aren't in your favor there's nothing to do about it. The next day, as Lucy's getting hot dogs, her boss Jerry comes to her. He tells her that she has to work on Christmas Day. Lucy doesn't like the idea at first, but later on agrees as she's the only one without a family. Christmas Day comes and Lucy's in her usual booth. Lucky for her, her Prince Charming comes by the window, gives her a token and wishes her Merry Christmas. She is in shock, but also regrets the fact she didn't say anything back. She's caught up in the situation but sees two men robbing her prince. They push him and he falls onto the tracks. She rushes to help him and even calls out to him but he doesn't respond. She jumps on the tracks next to him, and just as the train is about to hit them, she pulls him to the side. She saves him. It cuts to a scene in the hospital. She's trying to see the man, but they won't let her as only the family is allowed. As they set him in a room, she looks through the glass and talks to herself. She says I was going to marry him. One of the nurses hears her and pulls her to see the man. By now everyone in the hospital assumes that she is his fiance. The fiasco begins as his family walks through the door. All of them start asking about how the incident had happened. This is when Lucy speaks and explains the whole situation. The family is a little confused to see her as it is the first time they do so. They ask her who she is and the nurse chimes in and tells them that she is his fiance. Lucy tries to explain herself but is cut off by the grandma having some heart problems. Now she can't make the grandma suffer, so she doesn't say anything. The family is more than happy to see her as they all embrace her into a hug. Lucy pulls the nurse to the side and explains to her that she isn't the fiance, and that she was just talking to herself. The family sits in the waiting room, along with Lucy. They ask Lucy as to how she met Peter. They're really excited to see that Peter has found a nice girl and don't even let Lucy speak. Lucy speaks from the heart that it was love at first sight. We find out that Peter had an ex-girlfriend. Her name was Ashley. Everyone is in awe and they all love Lucy. Sometime later Lucy goes back to her apartment. On the stairs, she sees Joe Jr. He invites her to the movies but she doesn't really say anything. Nighttime comes and Lucy can't seem to shake the situation off. She decides to pay Peter a visit. She arrives in his room and sits beside his bed. She decides to introduce herself as they haven't met properly yet, and at least he can hear her. She tells him that everyone thinks that they're engaged and that she didn't mean for that to happen. She opens up to him about her childhood and how she imagined her engagement to be magical. She admits that she's lonely and she feels even lonelier that she's talking to him as he's unconscious. As she's caught up in the moment, she doesn't notice that the family's neighbor Saul, was listening to her all along. She ends up falling asleep next to Peter. She wakes up in the morning and proceeds to leave. However, she is stopped by Peter's family. All of them invite her to celebrate Christmas with them. She declines the offer as she has to work that night. The family insists because they adore her. She manages to escape the family but bumps into Peter's friend Dalton Clark. He tells her a very interesting story that will come in handy later. Lucy is conflicted. She doesn't know what to do. She tries to get some advice from Jerry but he tells her to pretend. It's Christmas Eve, Lucy's sitting in her apartment alone and bored, and she thinks about the offer. Sometime later she decides to go after all. She gets to the house and just as she's about to leave, Saul, the neighbor stops her. They sit on the front porch and have a talk. Lucy tells the story of her parents. How her mother died when she was a child and how her father passed away two years ago. Saul sympathizes with her and makes Lucy promise that she would never hurt Peter's family. They get inside. Lucy's heart is full. She sees what a loving family looks like. Her eyes are filled with joy as she sees the family exchange gifts. She receives a gift as well. She couldn't be happier. She watches the family unwrap their gifts with such joy and her eyes fill up with tears. The family has even put up a sock by the fire pit with the name Lucy on it. It cuts to scene from Peter's apartment. His real girlfriend calls him to say that she's coming to Chicago and would love to get married to him. Christmas passes and Lucy ends up spending the night in the family's house. She sleeps on the couch as Jack. Peter's brother walks in. 
His niece greets him and tells him to be quiet as Peter's fiancé is sleeping on the couch. Jack looks at her and says that she isn't Peter's fiancé. Luckily for Lucy, she is turned with her back facing them. Warning comes and Lucy tries to flee. As she does so, she is stopped by Jack. Lucy manages to escape Jack's questions by the honk of her taxi. Jack welcomes her to the family, to what she says thanks and leaves. Lucy gets back home and is searching through Peter's stuff. They were given to her at the hospital because she was Peter's fiancé in everyone's eyes. She sees cat food and realizes that Peter has a cat that hasn't been fed in a long time. She rushes to feed the cat. While this is happening Jack is doing an investigation on Lucy because he finds her suspicious. He goes to her building but is met by Joe Jr. He tells him that he is her boyfriend and Jack thinks the worst of her. He arrives at the apartment only to hear Lucy calling out for a cat. He gets even more suspicious as he knows that his brother doesn't have a cat. Lucy hits Jack's head with the door by accident. He tells her that Peter doesn't have a cat but a cat saves Lucy as it comes out of a corner. Lucy feeds the cat and Peter's phone starts ringing. They receive a call from the hospital, asking them to come over to give some blood for Peter. Jack decides to test Lucy again as he suggests they take Peter's car. Lucy gets anxious as she doesn't even know what Peter's car even looks like. She clicks the keys and luck is still on her side. The car in front of them lights up and they get in. At the hospital Jack still can't erase his suspicion of Lucy. He asks her when she met Peter and she says the date she saw Peter for the first time. September 17th. Lucy tries to run away from Jack and ends up in Peter's room. They all gather in the room and Jack tries to expose Lucy. He tells everyone that Lucy has a boyfriend and that his name is Joe Jr. Lucy laughs and denies it but Peter's grandma asks her to prove that she's with Peter. She ends up telling the story that Dalton told her a couple of days ago. Peter had only one testicle and Lucy was the only one that knew that. They check Peter and see that she isn't lying. Lucy ends up going home later in the night. She gets a knock on the door and as she opens it, Joe Jr. gets in. He is pissed off because Lucy had stood him up for the movie date. As they're arguing, there's a knock on her door. Lucy hides Joe in the closet and opens the door. Saul walks in and reveals to her that he knew about her lie. He advises her to not admit as the family finally thinks that they have their Peter back. He asks her to pretend so the family can be happy. Saul leaves. Lucy opens the closet to let Joe out but finds him trying on her shoes. She yells at him but a ring on the door cuts her off. Jack is at the door and he has a gift for her. She can't let Jack in as Joe's already in the apartment. She tells Jack that they should go to Peter's house and rushes him out the building. They manage to get the couch into the apartment. As they do so, they break a vase with some blue liquid that splatters on the white carpet. They put the couch on top of the carpet and laugh about it as they walk out of the apartment. They get to the truck and realize that Jack's truck had been blocked by other vehicles. Jack decides to walk Lucy home. As they're walking, they start chatting. They're connecting on a high level. Jack asks Lucy about her jacket and she reveals that it's her dad's. She starts talking about how her and her dad would always talk about traveling and visiting every part of the world. Jack asks her what place she would love to visit and she tells him Florence. She pulls out a passport out of her bag. Jack is pleasantly surprised but sees that the passport doesn't have any stamps yet. She tells Jack that she is planning on going to Florence soon. As they're talking, Lucy tells Jack that he reminds her of her father. Jack is flattered and they joke about it. They get to Lucy's building but as they try to go over an icy road, they start slipping and end up holding each other. They're close and their desire to kiss each other is evident. The chemistry is unreal. Both of them end up falling on the ground again as they try to move on. Lucy pulls him to the side and they both get up to clean themselves. Lucy feels butterflies in her stomach as she gets to her apartment. She watches Jack through the window and smiles to herself. The next morning, Lucy goes to Jerry and asks him for advice. He doesn't really give her any advice because at this point he is as confused as she is. The family invites Lucy to a dinner. As they're having the dinner, Lucy and Jack can't stop staring at each other. Peter's mother starts asking Lucy about the honeymoon but Lucy can't seem to keep her eyes off of Jack. The dinner ends, and as Jack and Lucy are about to walk out, they find themselves under a mistletoe. The family cheers and makes them kiss. They kiss and things become even more awkward. The next morning Peter's niece visits Lucy at the train station. Mary cut Lucy off as she tells that Lucy is going to marry Peter. Mary and her friend leave the booth but they overhear Lucy saying that she's pregnant. Lucy says that with sarcasm but they take it literally. The night of the New Year's comes and Mary rushes to tell the family that Lucy's pregnant. Jack rushes out the door and heads to Lucy's apartment. As he gets there he sees Joe Jr. leaning into Lucy and decides to leave. Of course Lucy wasn't doing anything with Joe. She was just giving him a friendly hug. Lucy sees Jack when she gets out of the building. He insists on giving her a ride to the party even though the party is nearby. She notices that Jack's acting weird but lets him tag along either way. They get to the party and everyone thinks that Jack is Peter, Lucy's fiancé. Lucy gets an alcoholic drink. Jack rushes to her and tells her that she shouldn't drink that. When she asks him why, he tells her because it's not good for the baby. The same moment as the music is lowered. Lucy is embarrassed and leaves the party. Jack is following her as he tries to apologize. They slow down and Jack apologizes. He mentions John's leaning and even shows Lucy how it looks. 
as she was disagreeing with him. They're close to kissing but are cut off by Joe, who asks Jack as to why he leaning into Lucy. All that John does is prove Jack's point which pisses Lucy off and she decides to go home. Jack tries to stop her, as he tells her that her and Peter are not a good match and that he doesn't want her to be unhappy. Lucy tells him off by reminding him that he's afraid to be honest with his father. She leaves and Jack is left speechless, he knows she's right. Over at the hospital, as everyone's celebrating New Year, Peter wakes up. His family is beside him. Lucy gets to the hospital and when she finds out that Peter had woken up, she tries to leave but Peter's father drags her to Peter's room. As Peter wakes up he recognizes everyone, but Lucy. The family thinks that Peter has amnesia. They even make the doctor believe it. The doctor diagnoses it as selective amnesia. Lucy is devastated and can't let this circus go on. She gets up to tell the family, but they cut her off by saying that they know. Lucy is confused but finds out that they know that she isn't pregnant. Lucy is about to say it all but she's cut off by Jack's arrival. All of them go to Peter's room again. Saul pulls Lucy and tells her that he'll tell them and she trusts him. As she goes to Peter's room, Saul goes the opposite. They try to get Peter to remember Lucy but all he says is that he recognizes her. That's enough for the family as they say he has amnesia. Peter is confused and doesn't even know what reality is anymore. Jack's driving Lucy home. They sit in silence, but Lucy finally speaks up. She calls Jack her friend but he's disappointed as he wants to be more. He wishes the best to Lucy and leaves. The next morning he decides to tell his father how he feels. His father doesn't take it the wrong way and that surprises him pleasantly. Saul tries to keep his promise but fails at it. In fact, he gives even more courage to Peter to propose to Lucy. Lucy arrives in Peter's room to give him back his stuff. She chats with him a little and they get along well. She sees that Peter is a great person. On the other side, at Peter's building, a chaos is happening. Peter's real girlfriend had arrived in the building. She's asking for the Peter but the guard doesn't let her in as he doesn't recognize her. Over at the hospital, they move Peter to the second floor. Lucy and Ashley arrive at the same time at the hospital. Ashley goes to the second floor, while Lucy goes to the fourth. Ashley sees Peter and immediately starts yelling at him. He tells her he doesn't want to be with her and that he wants to marry Lucy. She calls him an asshole and gets out. Lucy walks in after her. Peter wastes no time as he proposes to Lucy right away. It cuts to scene where Lucy is trying her wedding dress on. She gets a knock on her door. She opens it and sees Jack. He gifts her crystal ball with Florence inside it as an early wedding present. Lucy realizes that Jack is the one for her as she tries to stop him from leaving. She asks him if he could give her one reason to not marry his brother. He says that he can't do that and leaves. The day of the wedding comes. Lucy arrives and doesn't even let the pastor speak as she says I object. Jack objects the wedding as well. Lucy reveals the truth how she's in love with Jack and that she wants to be with him. She tells the family that she isn't Peter's fiancé and that she didn't even know him personally before the accident. The family is shocked but the door bursts open as Ashley comes in to object the wedding. Her husband comes after her as well. The family's in shock to find out that Peter had proposed to a married woman. They get into a fight and Lucy uses the chance to escape. A couple of days go by and as Lucy's collecting the tokens, she sees a ring through the little window. As she lifts her head she sees Jack and his family. Jack gets into the booth and kneels. He proposes to Lucy and she says yes. They kiss and they express their love to each other. It cuts to their wedding, where Lucy finally got her prince. Lucy's biggest wish comes true as she gets to go Florence for her honeymoon with her lovely prince. 